I'd like to say thank you to Established Titles for sponsoring this video and a big tip of the hat to H.I. Sutton for a fantastic graphic and news story he put up on NavalNews.com. I recommend you all go and read the suspected naval base being reestablished in Balaclava, Crimea. And uh, it it certainly is. Look at the work that they're doing there. So what's going on here? This is an old Soviet Union naval base that's in Crimea. It's been, you know, I believe out of service for a long period of time. But one of the cool things about this base is that they had a tunnel that connects what the old legacy base was to the Black Sea. So they could take submarines and without going through the main harbor where all the you know, commercial boats are and all the people are just watching the waters. They could sneak a submarine to sea by going around that, by literally going through a mountain or a hillside, you know, underwater. That's that's one of the claim the fames of this uh, submarine base or naval base, I should say. And it is being refit. Uh, the thing that struck me is that this is happening in Crimea, though. So. Uh, the Russians right now are not winning a war in Ukraine, uh, which is part of Crimea, and yet they are investing lots of money into this project. Look at all the, the barges and uh, pilings that they're driving down to expand the waterfront so that they can add dock and pier space for more and more warships. The Russians really don't believe they're going to lose Crimea. I mean, the Ukrainians are simply rolling through Western Ukraine right now into the Donbass. They're going to be taking Kherson any day now. And Crimea is next on the buffet table. So this, I believe, is eventually is going to end up in, in, in Ukrainian hands. And, and how delusional do the Russian uh, decision makers have to be to think that they're going to be able to keep Crimea from we as as the NATO as the Western NATO uh, nations are going to be lucky if we can stop Ukraine from going further into Russia because they're just beating the hell out of them. But on that note, a word from our sponsor. Thank you to Established Titles for sponsoring this video. Established Titles is a fun and novel way to preserve natural woodlands of Scotland as well as support a global reforestation effort. Through established titles, you can purchase symbolic souvenir plots of land for yourself or as a great gift. This project is based on historic Scottish tradition where landowners are referred to as lords and ladies. You can officially include the title of lord or lady on credit cards, plane tickets, and dating profiles. And having that title on your dating profile is a great way to break the ice on your first date. Each title pack gives you at least one square foot of land with a unique plot number on a private estate in Edelston, Scotland, and an official certificate with a crest. Established Titles works with global charities like One Tree Planted and Trees for the Future to plant a tree with every order. The first 200 people purchasing a title pack with my link will effectively be next to my plot. It's within walking distance. We can start a sub-brief kingdom. It makes an amazing last minute gift. Established Titles is running a massive Black Friday sale right now. Plus, if you use my code SUB, you get an additional 10% off. So go to EstablishedTitles.com forward slash SUB and get your gifts now and help support the channel. All right, welcome back from that. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about U.S. Navy deployments and uh, how big our Navy is and some of the problems that comes along with that. But let's update everybody on where we are around the world. We have the USS America and USS Tripoli there in Japan. Those are the LHAs. They carry a lot of Marines on board and uh, the airplanes that support them, whether it's the Ospreys or the Lightning you know, fighters. Those are in Japan right now. Ronald Reagan is underway with our carrier strike group now uh, near the... Philippine Sea. George H.W. Bush uh, continues to patrol the Med, uh, right now appears to be in the Adriatic Sea. Uh, George R. Ford, CSG, continues to do workup for her first deployment. That's our new super carrier, which is what we called the old carrier. So I guess this one would be a super duper carrier. It's really big, uh, can carry a lot of planes, has a lot of firepower on board. She's getting ready to go on her first uh, deployment. Still doing some workups there. And USS Nimitz operating off the coast of uh, Los Angeles and San Diego. Not sure what's going on there, but that is a common training area. We have a big a weapons range there. Uh, so we often see pre-deployment preparations happen in that area. I assume that's what the Nimitz is doing, even though that's not really confirmed. 
So, so I want to talk a little bit today about the number of ships in our Navy. Uh, one thing that everyone agrees on, whether it's in Congress or the Navy itself, is that our Navy must grow in number of ships. And these are the most recent numbers. These numbers have been in negotiation for years. They keep changing. So this is the most recent update for manned ships. It's 321 ships on the low end, including everything from aircraft carriers to support ships. And on the high end, 372 manned vessels. Now, unmanned vessels, we're not going to talk about right now because that's still up in the air. But look at what we have right now. We have 292 manned vessels. So no matter what, we're going to be increasing these, you know, with another 40 to another 60 ships, right? 70, 80 ships. Um, going forward. And we're having trouble manning these ships right now. As a matter of fact, uh, Bupers just put out a message saying that they need to increase the number of recruits that go through the pipeline every year to something like 34,000 a year up from last year's numbers. And we're having trouble retaining people in the United States Navy. And that's becoming a real problem now with us wanting more ships, demanding more at sea billets and not having that. So the Navy does have a new program. It just announced it uh, this month. And where it's going to incentivize sailors with money and promotion, you can actually get a promotion by staying at sea longer for certain jobs, certain billets. So this is a great way where if you're in the Navy and you're having trouble getting that next pay grade, like a lot of us struggled with that, this is one way to improve your chances or pretty much guarantee you get extra pay and that next rank whenever you uh, volunteer for these at sea billets. So one of the big problems with Navy retention is the way the Navy has been treating sailors lately. And I've been asked a lot recently what I think of uh, retention. Should someone who's in the Navy stay in the Navy or someone who's graduating high school join the Navy? And over the summer, I had to finally flip my position to no. Uh, it's not worth joining the Navy right now based on what people in the Navy are telling me what it's like at the deck plate level. And a few things that have not changed since the time I was in is how the Navy treats uh, enlisted sailors. Uh, a lot of times you aren't treated with the respect that maybe you've earned uh, or, or deserved based on your rank. Um, and you just need to sometimes work through that. So be prepared if you are joining the Navy that you're all, always going to have uh, the best leadership above you. There are a lot of bad leaders everywhere. And that also includes the Navy. They're not, you know, only in, you know, the corporate private side, they're in the Navy side as well. So having bad leadership or poor leadership above you is something you're gonna have to work through. And then whenever you're in a position of leadership, be a better leader than than what you had. Uh, the second thing that I hear a lot of that I experienced myself years ago was the bureaucracy at the deck plate level. It is crazy how much you have to document and uh, logistically organize just to get some rather simple stuff done because nothing is simple on board a ship. So you have things like uh, extensive you know, supervision, you cannot begin your work until you have X number of people of certain positions or ranks to watch you do that. You have to have your safety briefs, you have to have your checklist and inventories done ahead of time. And then you can go and, and swab the deck something re relatively simple. That will never change because this is a government organization and bureaucracy is the lifeblood of keeping that organization moving forward. Everything has to be documented in triplicate, supervised twice, stamped, and then approved before you can actually do it. Um, be prepared for that if you're going to join uh, any service, but especially the Navy, because I can tell you that's not going away. Bureaucracy is not. But something you can look forward to is making a difference. If you do join the Navy, you're going to have experience experiences you'll remember the rest of your life and be able to share with your families. I want to bring to you a recent event that happened uh, in the Gulf of Aden. That's very near Africa on the Indian Ocean side. Whenever uh, one of our ships came across a burning dhow, this is basically a fisherman's boat out there, um, you know, had caught on fire and we were providing assistance to them here. Here you can see the crew, you know, having this this huge looks like a three inch uh, fire hose there over the side trying to put the fire out and uh, salvage and save whoever was on board the boat and this is just one example of some of the really good things we do that never make any press you never see the stuff in the news but it happens a lot where 
sometimes we're just in the right place at the right time to save people. Whether it's a hurricane and it's an organized relief process, or we're just out there patrolling the oceans and helping you know other people that we come across like this. So there's a lot of benefit to joining the military. And I just wanted to give these sailors some credit here uh, for doing a job well done. So uh, if you are interested in joining the Navy, please give it a shot. It may be the best four years of your life that you continue to talk about the rest of your life. Thanks for watching, everybody. Bye.